Good morning. We're glad you were able to join us here. We want to wish you a happy Resurrection Day. We're sad that we're not able to be together as the body of Christ in person, but we still want to be able to celebrate together the resurrection of our Lord and what all that means for us. And to do that, I actually want to open with a poem that I found. It's written by Glenn Scrivener, and it's from the perspective of Mary and Martha, whose brother Lazarus died just shortly before Christ entered in Jerusalem and died himself, and how Lazarus' death preceded Christ's resurrection, and, and Lazarus' resurrection precedes Christ's resurrection as well. And I think it ties well together the, the shock and the concern that, that Mary and Martha must have had when their brother died, and they're wondering, where was Christ in all this? And then later on, Christ dies, and they're still wondering, where is Christ in all this? And, and it becomes very clear in the resurrection what Christ's plan is. If you had been here, my brother would not have died. If you tried, were you otherwise occupied? Were your hands tied? Or did you hide, maybe biding your time? But for what? A deeper challenge? A grander entrance? A brighter glory? A better story? The nick of time is a good story. That would do. The eleventh hour and you'd come through. But midnight you were due. Now it's half past two. Where were you? If you had been here, he would not have died. You were meant to ride on your white horse, enter the fray, the dragon slay, save the day. Did you hear us pray? Did you want it this way? If you had been here to stop him dying, why are you crying? You're meant to be death-defying. Now you're sighing at the tomb, decrying mortal ruin. Why in God's name are you queuing for the same? Your commander-in-chief, we demanded relief. But you landed beneath all our sorrows and grief. Now it's you on your knees, empty-handed, bequeathing us none of our pleas. Is this what you chose? To bring only tears? We, we have plenty of those. Why are you here? You say, to draw near. And then you sink like a stone, past the brink of the chasm we desperately fear, in darkness enfolded, our terrors you shouldered, while pierced by the nails and the spear. You have been here. You stoop far below all depths that we know, engulfed in our weeping and woe, submerged in the grave, then risen to save, upending assumptions we'd made. If you had been here the way that we'd prayed, we'd only exceed in sorrow delayed. We'd only evade the reaper for now, but soon we would bow. Soon we would be plowed in the ground with no one to plead. Yet through you, death is a gardener, and we are the seed. And this is the path resurrection decreed. If you will be here, drawing near, that will do. For now to know you in your grace, we can face what is true. As in Adam the world dies, so in Christ all will arise. When you appear, and my brother too, when you wipe away tears, when darkness clears, when morning has cheered and joy swallows fear, through all our years, here's how we'll cope. This is our sure hope. You will be here. Amen. We want to celebrate that truth together this morning. What it means that Christ rose from the dead and made a way that we now can forever draw near to Him and He can draw near to us and we will always be able to have that relationship with Him. Death is no longer the end for us. It's no longer the separation between us and, and God. Let's sing and celebrate that this morning. Sing with me, Behold Our God. oceans in his hands who has numbered every grain of sand kings and nations tremble at his voice all creation rises to rejoice behold our God seated on his throne Come, let us adore Him. Behold our King, 
nothing can compare. Come, let us adore Him. Who has given counsel to the Lord? Who can question any of His words? Who can teach the one who knows all things? Who can fathom all his wondrous deeds? Behold our God, seated on his throne. Come, let us adore him. Behold our King. Nothing can compare, come let us adore Him. Who has felt the nails upon His hands, bearing all the guilt of sinful man? God eternal, humble to the grave, Jesus Savior, risen now to reign. Behold our God, seated on His throne, come let us adore Him. Behold our King. Nothing can compare, come let us adore Him. Amen. Let's behold our God and the wisdom of His plans this morning in this Resurrection Sunday together. Hey, good morning, everyone. And from our families to yours, we do wish you a very uh, happy uh, Resurrection Sunday. Even though we can't necessarily be together, we can still celebrate and, uh, our risen Savior. And it kind of gives us a, maybe a little bit of a, uh, an appreciation for what some other churches and other cultures have had to live with for a very long time, trying to meet in secret, not being able to always get together the way that they want to. We can certainly appreciate the, the privileges and the blessings that we have in this country that we've enjoyed for so long and hopefully going through this experience will make us appreciate that even a little bit more so as we're doing something like this. But as we come together to celebrate today and just our normal Sunday worship, I would like to read to us from Psalm chapter 16. And it says this, Preserve me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, You are my Lord. I have no good apart from you. As for the saints in the land, they are excellent ones, in whom is all my delight. The sorrows of those who run after another God shall multiply. Their drink offerings of blood I will not pour out or take their names on my lips. The Lord is my chosen portion and my cup. You hold my lot. The lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Indeed, I have a beautiful inheritance. I bless the Lord who gives me counsel. In the night also my heart instructs me. I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, and I shall not be shaken. Therefore my heart is glad, and my whole being rejoices. My flesh also dwells secure. For you will not abandon my soul to Sheol, or let your Holy One see corruption. You make known to me the path of life, and in your presence there is fullness of joy. And at your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Let's pray. Generally, Father, we thank you so much for this day that you've given us to allow us to be able to come kind of together, at least virtually together, to be able to celebrate this Resurrection Day. And as we read a, a psalm like this, as we think about that, Preserve me, O God, for in you I take refuge. And we are reminded very much of why it is that we can take refuge for you, Lord, as we celebrate the resurrection of your Son from the grave, who truly was crucified, who was cru uh, truly uh, killed and died and buried again, and yet we realize the grave could not hold Him. And so Lord, we celebrate that fact and know that that if the grave could not hold Him, our greatest th threat and our greatest fear of all of life is truly that the, the we will be swallowed up by the grave and be gone and cease to exist forevermore. And, and we realize, Lord, that it has been done away with because of Your victory over death itself. And for all those who are found in You, Lord, we realize the grave is not, does not hold the final answer or sway over us. 
Lord, we don't have to fear death the way that others fear death because of what you have done. And so, Lord, we come running to you and pleading to you to take our refuge, knowing that in you there is truly a a, a foundation and and a hope that is found there and really nowhere else. And so, Lord, as he said, we, you, know, you are our Lord, and we realize that all of this is true and possible, not because of anything that we've ever done or accomplished, because of who you are and what was accomplished at the cross and really accomplished at the grave of, of your resurrection that gives us that hope. And truly, Lord, there is no good in us apart from you. And so, Lord, we realize as we stand before you and realize the robes of righteousness that we wear are not our own. They are truly borrowed clothes given to us by your Son in his righteous life that he lived for us and that has been imputed to us or given to us that we wear the clothes of another we wear the righteousness of your son and not our own and that is the only reason that lord you will allow us to come in and to be with you forevermore and so we want to praise you for that goodness and for your grace to us and truly that makes our hearts glad and we can rejoice and and praise you knowing that you are our god And what a privilege it is to be able to have that, Lord. And then to be in a place where we try not to keep that to ourselves. Where we try to gloriously and graciously tell other people about that. And even just let it be something that's constantly on our lips, showing and demonstrating this is something that we truly appreciate, what it really is. And want to tell other people about that as well. That we are not going to be abandoned to Sheol or to the grave, as the Bible says. Lord, that we we truly look forward to being in your presence forevermore. And we have this to look forward to because of the work of your Son. And so, Lord, as we continue then on this path, Lord, we realize that salvation or the avoidance of hell or whatever, you know, forgiveness of sins is not the end of everything, Lord. That, that now truly we are on a walk in which we're following after you. We're obedient because of what we already are in you, Lord, that we are now accepted. Therefore, we can turn in, in glorious rejoicing to our salvation and now obey. And as the Bible says, that you make known to me the path of life and we follow in those footsteps, Lord, following after you, uh, praising your name. And I pray you'd help us to do that. And Lord, it's kind of hard to do that when you're in isolation. But Lord, there are places and ways in which we can, as we interact with those around us, that we have... um we're not overruled by that fear and trepidation that, that others are maybe experiencing as are going through this. Not that we're immune from those things, but Lord, at the same time, we realize that there is something far greater, far more powerful uh, that is in control of these situations. And Lord, that gives us a peace when everything else around us is falling apart. And to be able to say that to our families, be able to say that to the people that we come across, and when we're out in public, and even those uh, online where we have opportunities to interact with other people, it's like, this is what gives me peace. And when I fear, I strengthen myself in the Lord, as David so often did, and I find again that peace. And Lord, it influences the way that we live and the things, the choices that we make, Lord, that we, we follow after you and we can demonstrate again and again and again the, the validity of your word and, and the way it has changed us and transformed us from the inside out. And so, Lord, we rejoice and praise you this morning for what it is that you have done. And realize truly, Lord, that the pleasures forevermore truly really are found in your hands. Not on our own, not what we can make of ourselves or do for ourselves, but truly in you. And so, Lord, we rejoice and praise you for who you are and what you have done. Truly, Lord, you have loved us with an everlasting love. And we praise and seek to praise your name continually now and forevermore. We thank and praise you for all this. In Christ's name, amen. At this time, we'd like to have our missionary moment for the day. Today's missionary moment comes from Jay and Nancy Armstead in Israel. And they're talking a little bit of what this virus has meant for them. So I'll read the letter for you guys. Shalom, dear friends. Well, since we are all at a standstill due to this virus, I thought it would be a good time to to get a letter written and sent out to you all. I think there is still a postal uh, motto that the mail must go through. You may wonder where in the world we are and what is happening in our lives. We are currently in the large and lovely state of Texas, way down at the southern tip. So far in this valley of four, of four counties, there are uh, uh, four counties. There we go. There are no cases of the virus. We left California a couple weeks ago on our RV for a low adventure. We had a wonderful, encouraging meeting at a supporting church in Arizona and traveled down here to see Nancy's parents, where they winter in Bibleville. We had a couple of weeks between scheduled scheduled meetings. We had several visits planned in these two weeks to see friends and co-workers of ours in the south, but many of those have been put on hold as travel has been impeded. Several friends are under self-quarantine due to the travel abroad. 
Daily, we find ourselves back at the drawing board, rerouting our mapping applications. Perhaps it is not such a bad thing, though, because when life is too busy and traveling requires all of our time, we don't find ourselves as often on our knees. We need that more than anything else these days. Please pray with us that for God's direction in our lives. Every moment, every day, and for the long term, visa issues and travel back to Israel. Truly, we want God to open doors to go back to Israel to our beloved people. This virus is all the world stopping and searching for answers to the hard questions in life that are found in Scripture. People are fearful and unsure how to respond to this crisis. We pray that God will be glorified in this crisis and will draw people to Himself. We wish we were in Israel at this time. We do not be... Um, we do not doubt the greatness of our God to save our lost friends in Israel, and we pray for His intervention in their lives. We are still waiting for uh, information concerning a visa that has been tentatively offered to us through the Baptist village in Israel. We continue to ask the Lord to open or close doors according to His perfect, uh, perfect will. Our eyes are upon Him. Again, if you would like for us to, be, uh, to personally come and share our hearts, our people, and our desire for Israel with you, please contact us. Jane and Nancy Armstead, missionaries to Israel. Let's pray for them. Heavenly Father, we are thankful once again for the missionaries who are spreading the good news of your resurrection around the world this morning. We're thankful for those who are abroad and for those who are doing their best to get back overseas. We lift up the Armsteads, Father, and I'm sure they are just a really frustrating place, not just with the virus uh, impeding their ability to visit sending churches and, and people that they know in the States, but also just trying to find a way to get back to the people that they've been able to witness to and minister to in Israel. We pray that you would allow their visa applications to go through smoothly and that you would just make your will clear to them as they're in the process. And, and in the meantime, Father, just give them peace as they are going through, honestly, this frustrating time. In your name we pray. Amen. At this time, we'd like to have our scripture reading for the morning. You will turn over to, with me to Romans chapter 6, verses 1 through 23. Romans chapter 6, verses 1 through 23. You know, the resurrection of Christ has a lot of implications. It doesn't just mean that we get to live the way that we want. It doesn't just mean that we are free from sin and death. It also means that we are now slaves to righteousness. And that's what Paul is talking about here in Romans chapter 6. We'll read the whole chapter together. What shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin still live in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into His death? We were buried, therefore, with Him by baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we had been united with Him in a, in a death like His, we shall certainly be united with Him in a resurrection like His. We know that our old self was crucified with Him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing, so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. For one who has died has been set free from sin. Now if you have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with Him. We know that Christ being raised from the dead will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over Him. For the death He died, He died to sin once for all, but the life He lives, He lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, to make you obey its passions. Do not present your members to sin as instruments for unrighteousness, but present yourselves to God as those who have been bought from death, or those who have been brought from death to life, and your members to God as instruments for righteousness. For sin will have no dominion over you since you are not under, under law, but under grace. What then? Are we to sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? By no means. Do you not know that if you present yourselves to anyone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one whom you obey, either of sin, which leads to death, or of obedience, which leads to righteousness? But thanks be to God that you who were once slaves of sin have become obedient from the heart, to the standard of teaching to which, uh, to which you were committed. And having been set free from sin, having become slaves of righteousness. I am speaking in human terms because of your natural limitations. For just as you once presented your members as slaves to impurity and to lawlessness, leading to more lawlessness, so now present your members as slaves to righteousness, leading to sanctification. For when you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. 
But what fruit were you getting at that time from the things of which you, were, you are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now that you have been set free from sin, and you have become slaves of God, the fruit you get leads to sanctification, and its end, eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. On this Resurrection Day, we don't want to make light the sacrifice of Christ. And I hope over this week, this Passion Week, you've been able to think a little bit about what it cost Christ to buy us back. The pain that He went through, and I think this song really draws our attention to that. How deep the Father's love. How deep the Father's love for us How vast beyond all measure That He should give His only Son To make a wretch's treasure How great the pain of searing loss The Father turns His face away as wounds which mar the chosen one Bring many sons to glory Behold the man upon a cross My sin upon his shoulders Ashamed I hear my mocking voice Call out among the scoffers It was my sin that held him there Until it was accomplished His dying breath has brought me life I know that it is finished I will not boast in anything No gifts, no power, no wisdom But I will boast in Jesus Christ His death and resurrection Why should I gain from His reward? I cannot give an answer but this I know with all my heart His words have paid my ransom And then if you'll sing with me in Christ alone. In Christ alone my hope is found he is my light, my strength, my song This cornerstone, this solid ground Firm through the fiercest drought and storm What heights of love, what depths of peace When fears are stilled, when striving cease My comforter my all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand. In Christ alone, who took on flesh, fullness of God in helpless babe, this gift of love and righteousness. Scorned by the ones He came to save Till on that cross as Jesus died The wrath of God was satisfied For every sin on Him was laid Here in the death of Christ I live the ground his body lay light of the world by darkness slain then burned 
bursting forth in glorious day. Up from the grave he rose again, and as he stands in victory, since curse has lost its grip on me, for I am his and he is mine, bought with the precious blood of Christ. in life, no fear in death, this is the power of Christ in me, from life's first cry to final breath, Jesus commands my destiny, no power of hell, no scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hand. Till he returns or calls me home Here in the power of Christ I'll stand Amen. I hope that's true of you this morning, that you are resting in the resurrection of Christ and the hope that that brings for you and living in accordance with it. We invite you once again to join us for part two of this service for the preaching part. That'll be just in the description below. Thanks. Bye.